Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of How I Teach with Language Arts Lady. I'm Donna Reish, your hostess and your teacher for this broadcast. Let's start with a little bit of housekeeping. I'm trying to keep the housekeeping notes short. Um, hopefully you have seen the previous episodes and you know a little bit about the housekeeping tasks and uh, information. So we have two ways to consume audio and video, and you have uh, two ways to have visuals. So you can, of course, listen on your favorite podcast platform, or you can watch the video on YouTube or at the blog, languageartsladyblog.com. Either way, you have access to free lessons every single week. So I am showing those of you who are watching the video right now, I am showing you the teacher's notebook episode sheets for this episode, episode number 23, um, how I teach twice told tale writing for junior high and up, which is an amazing intro to story writing. So you can watch the video, which has the um, teacher's notebook in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, or you can listen and follow along in your teacher's notebook, or you can watch and follow along in your teacher's notebook. Uh, anyway, you consume, you want to be sure to grab your teacher's notebook, because as you can see, when I scan through this, you can print this off, uh, listen to this week's episode and last week's episode and learn how to teach this lesson and then print this lesson off for your own students. So free lessons every week. Uh, with videos of me and audios of me teaching how I teach that. So um, this is your teacher's notebook for this week. So without further ado, I'm going to hop on into the PowerPoint and begin. Last week, we started off with, um, let me get this slideshow going. We started off with the uh, part one of this. So this is a two-part episode. If you remember right, I um, uh, comically thought that I was going to do this in one episode in 30 minutes, uh, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because um, it's a two-week project and I teach it over two weeks of classes. So anyway, that kind of didn't make any sense. But uh, so we're going to take off where we left off last week. But for those of you who did not watch last week, you'll want to go back and watch what leads up to today. So. Uh, this is from a book called Twice Told Tales, Level 3, which uh, all of my either Write for a Month books or my individual lessons, like the Twice Told Tale lessons, the Writing Box lessons, all of these will be up and for sale at Teachers Pay Teachers over the next school year. So right now, I think I have like 40 products there. Keep watching, and you can grab a hold of any of these one week, two week, four week books and products and print them off for your own students. Um, it's just a great platform for me to get my materials out there in smaller chunks for people. And then of course you can print whatever you want from it. So this is a um, level three project and that means that it is uh, junior high, sixth, seventh and eighth. Uh, fifth graders would have a little struggle with it but definitely high schoolers can also use it. Twice Told Tales, projects. Um, if you come back here to the back of your teacher's notebook or back to the back of the slides, you can see the teacher's uh, twice told tale episode, twice told tale lessons that come in all of these books. So there are dozens of twice told tale uh, projects and books and lessons that are going to be available at Teachers Pay Teachers. Some of these, the Beauty and the Beast, Peter Pan, and um, uh, Jungle Book are already there and others are coming up every week. So you can see that we have from really fourth grade and up have Twice Told Tales. So that's exciting because um, Twice Told Tales lessons, the story writing, all of this uh, through the Twice Told Tales can be used at the student's level from fourth grade up to 12th grade. So there are many, many, many lessons of those and many products care with this. The reason I say that this is an amazing story writing um, approach is because, as I explained last week, when your student is not a natural story writer, um, this lays gives the student the groundwork. So let me just give a little summary of Twice Told Tale. There's the overview box. I talked about that last week. 
So the twice told tale lessons are story writing lessons in which the student has a model to use to spin off of. So I designed these oh, about 10 years ago. It actually came to me, and I mentioned this last week, when I uh, was singing to um, somebody, I can't remember who I was singing to, but I was singing these old piggyback songs where you take something like you say, twinkle, twinkle, little star, and instead it says something like, um, uh, um, I'm just making this up off the top of my head, little one, little one, oh, so bright, how you make my heart so right. Okay, I just made that up because, you know, uh, amateur poet here. And uh, so they are just piggyback songs. And so with that, I got to thinking, what if we could take a model story and that already has the uh, a, a main character, some supporting characters, the um, plot, um, so obstacles, a resolution that those mo that story already has all of those elements, and we let students piggyback off of that or twice tell in the game we now call them TTTs, twice told tales, twice tell those stories themselves, but they don't have to come up with so much on their own, right? Because in this case, the Emperor's New Clothes, we have one main character who is being deceived by supporting characters. And we have a time and place and we have obstacles and we have um, the, the obstacles of course are the, whatever the trickster may be, in this case it's clothing, um, the trick item. And then we have a resolution, right? A naive, yeah, in this case, a child who points out that the emperor has been deceived all this time. So in a twice told tale, the model is given and then students take, and they take that and they come up with their own emperor or their own person who is being deceived, their own characters who are deceiving that person, their own thing that they're being deceived by and their own land, their own world, and, and the same type of resolution and so forth. It's absolutely brilliant because, I, mean, I don't just, that sounded very prideful, but, but the reason I have found that it has been uh, really, really genius through the years of teaching this and te testing these books and these projects is because it takes your like advanced story writer and lets them just run with it and, and they just love it. And it takes your novice story writer or your, even your reluctant story writer and lets them feel like they can really do this. So um, just back to the overview box here, see if I can make that bigger, see if you can see it. I don't know if you can or not. So uh, I always give options that they could use if they can't come up with something on their own. But usually what these options do is it just gives them a springboard to come up with their own. Right, but sometimes p students who are reluctant story writers will use these. So it could be a general with a fake weapon, a girl with a fake beauty potion, a millionaire with a fake business, a person with fake money, a mouse with a uh, mouse trap, a fish and a baited hook, a fish and an angler fish. So um, let me make that smaller again. So those are some options in ours. Our sample, there's the model. I went over that last week, scene by scene, and described how we use the model. There's the model. And in our sample, we get to it, we have a general who receives new weapons. All right, so the emperor, um, in this case, is a general. So let me go, that's just, uh, those are just your choices there. There's the sample. Lost the sample. Okay, so let me go back to the choices that you that your student has. Okay, so the sample is actually uh, listed paragraph by paragraph. So let me go back to that in a little bit. Okay, so here we have a um, the two choices for your 
you know, your avid story writer versus your beginning or intro story writer. Okay, so first of all, they choose their setting and that's A2, the assignment there, A2. They choose their setting. So it could be in another world. It could be under the sea. It could be on Mars. It could be in um, pioneer days. It could be in another country during a certain time period. It could be in the Renaissance. It could be um, in the caveman. It can be any type of setting that they want. Then they choose their characters. And then they use this directed brainstorming box. So I mentioned this last week, a directed brainstorming box is different than a regular brainstorming box because they're directed. So setting details here, obstacles here, solutions here, and anything else that they want to uh, brainstorm. They can put character traits about their characters or something, This that last box is for them to decide. But this is directed in that they're not just coming up with anything, they are working their brainstorming settings, their brainstorming obstacles, their brainstorming solutions, and so forth. All right, then we have a quote lesson, which I am going to do dialogue in the next few weeks, um, but I don't do it today because <laughs> the twice told tale takes long enough. All right, so then they have two choices to design their scenes. And this is where, again, we are catering to that uh, beginning writer, reluctant beginning story writer, because as I pointed out last week, not all reluctant story writers are reluctant research writers, right? It, some students are very strong in a certain area and some are weaker in other areas. So they could be great research writers, but just not really enjoy story writing as much. So there are two choices. So you can use um, choice A or choice B. All right, and again, this caters to both types of learners. Choice A, is where you stay very, very close to the scenes that are already given in the model. So here's this, uh, I have the box A open if you are listening and you wanna follow along in your uh, teacher's notebook. So in box A, they we take the scenes and we divide them out like this of the model and they choose their own, um, their own scene topics, okay? So they use the model very, very, very closely. All right, so they use um, the model scene by scene. So here scene one is um, the emperor loved by new clothes and neglected his duties, da, 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 da. And the example from the sample paper about the general, the sample story, which everything has samples in it. So the sample scene would be the general receives new weapons designers. Now you take this scene, the student takes this scene and says, my scene one is going to be, okay, the um, mermaid, you know, receives a new um, potion potion to um, uh, give her legs, okay? And so in, in uh, choice A, you can see how they're going to go scene by scene. Scene two is in the general story, the men explain their talents. And then your scene two is going to be what? Your scene two will be the um, uh, sharks, explaining the potion that's going to make the mermaid grow legs, okay? So then scene three, and there's what happens in scene three to the emperor and his clothes, scene three in the general and his weapon is going to be the general and the men dialogue about their gratitude. And your scene three or your student scene three might be the mermaid and the sharks talk about um, how happy the sharks are to help the mermaid. All right, so you can see this is a lot of hand holding, a lot of training wheels, as I like to say. And this is why Twice Told Tales are so successful because the reluctant story writer has this to hold on to. They have this hand holding. They have these training wheels to help them. 
and they're going to design all of their scenes in box A, choice A. Now, suppose they don't want to do choice A. They are more avid story writers and they want to design their own scenes um, loosely based on what the story is. So they're still going to use a character who has been deceived about something by some people in a certain place in a certain time period and then is um, then is uh, revealed by somebody that that is not true. So they're still going to use that, but they don't want to work so closely with the model. They want to make their own scenes. So then that is where choice B comes into play. And in choice B, they have, here's a sample. A mouse loves exploring. Scene two, he discovers a pantry. Scene three, he escapes from people. Scene four, the mouse and his friend dialogue about danger. Scene five, the mouse stays away and explores outside. Um, six, mouse grows bored and hungry. Seven, sees piece of cheese in trap. Um, scene eight, mouse and friend dialogue. Scene nine, mouse caught. Scene 10, friend goes for help. Scene 11, cat and uh, people nearly discover the mouse and so forth. So this is a, a where the student wants to design it more himself. All right, so then regardless of whether they use A or B, they are going to come over here and put all of their scenes down. Now, um, there's, there are good reasons for this, okay? And some students will say, well, why can't I just write? Why do I have to put my scenes here and then outline? You know, I, I just wanna write my story. And we know what happens, right? When students do not plan ahead for what they're going to write. I write 500 words every day minimum. Um, and I always plan what I'm going to write. I write down some notes. I get some quotes, I do whatever it is that I need to prepare, and I plan what I'm going to write every day. Um, novelists plan what is going to happen in this chapter, what is going to take place, who the characters are going to be in this chapter, and what kinds of obstacles are, are going to be presented in that chapter, what kind of resolutions, Who's going to dialogue with whom? Who are the characters? They, people who write well do not just sit down and write and hope for the best, right? And I mean, we hear it all the time. Like I just started writing and I couldn't stop. And the next thing I know I had a novel. Not really so much, right? That really is not how it happens. And so this is directed, right? And again, it goes back to the methodology that I use in all of my writing books, and that is the um, directed writing approach. And that is where students are directed in what they're going to write. There's no, there's no vagueness. There is no, you know, students saying, well, I just don't know what to write. I just don't know what to say. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, what information to get in the case of a research-based project. I don't know how to make points in the case of a persuasive essay. I don't know how to make something happen in my story. I don't understand what to do. I've chosen a mermaid and some sharks, but I don't know what to do. And the directed writing approach overcomes all of those writing obstacles, regardless of whether it's research-based, essay-based, or story-based. Right, so this is just part of that directed writing approach where the student is going to say, this is what's going to happen in this scene. Now it says my paragraph quote scene. In younger books, in the fourth and fifth grade books, their scenes are their paragraphs. Okay, so we, they don't do a lot, they don't do dialogue, so to speak. So in this case though, from really junior high and up, they are required to have dialogue. Remember, I went over that overview box last week. And remember, we always teach all the skills that are needed. So they're going to be asked in this particular project to have X amount of dialogue, to have an onomatopoeia, to have a personification. They're going to be whatever they are asked to do, 
I am going to direct them via lessons. I didn't put them all in here because it would make it would make makes the presentation way too long. But the over two a two week period as they have this twice told tale lesson, they will get every type of instruction that they need to complete this. Well, during that two weeks plus previous to this, right? So, you know, we start out doing just quotes, one quote in a, you know, a third grade essay. And then we keep building and building and building and building. So they are going to be given all the tools that they need. And again, that is that directed writing approach where I am directing them step by step. So in this case, once it gets to junior high, they have scenes. And then within that scene, they might have multiple paragraphs. Remember last week when we went over the model, how one scene had four paragraphs because they had dialogue, people speaking back and forth. Again, I'm going to do a dialogue lesson. I don't know if it's gonna be 24 or 25, but it's coming up um, in the next couple of weeks. So um, you will want to stay tuned for that and print off that dialogue lesson and use it um, because I mean, not to be bragging, but I'm very good at teaching dialogue. I'm actually really, really, uh, my strengths lie in teaching um, the uh, all types of grammar and stuff like that. Well, I guess I've written 50,000 pages and 20,000 of them were writing. So I guess I like it all. All right. So they're going to lay out their scenes, scene by scene from either box A or box B. Okay. And uh, then they're going to outline. All right, now I talked about how we have outline samples everywhere. Okay, so now I'm at the on the page it says partial sample outline from model story. All right, so this is showing them from the model of the emperor how they would lay out their outline. So I'm just gonna camp out here for a couple of minutes because um, I use I use all of this to teach from, all right? I don't just put the sample outlines or the sample papers in the books and have the students read them. See, then you can see that's how it's done, kids. No, I use it to teach from. So when I get to this, this is how this would go. I would say, okay, look here, guys. We have uh, scene one is the emperor receives new weavers. All right, and then S1, S2, S3, S4, those are sentences, okay? So they have sentence notes. And so this is what their outline is going to look like for their twice told tale. And I specifically put the emperor one in because the emperor one is laid out like this scene, scene by scene. So it's really easy to understand. So I tell them, look there guys in scene one, sentences one through four are outlined using, um, symbols, right? Using symbols to outline. And there's no dialogue in that. Look at scene two, the men explain their talents. Then we have dialogue. So be sure when you make your outline, you put your dialogue in. Because when the first man speaks, there are going to be two sentences of dialogue. And then when it says other man, we're going to make a new paragraph, right? Which is part of the dialogue lesson that I'm going to be teaching you in the next couple of weeks. But um, I will have already taught it to these students, all right? So then they realize, okay, and when I check their outlines and I grade their outlines, they know that they, ha I have to be able to look at their outline and see, oh, here's your dialogue, here are people speaking. Okay, look at scene three. We have the emperor speaking, then we have one weaver speaking, then we have the other weaver speaking, then we have the emperor speaking again, all right? And then of course I say, okay guys, how many paragraphs are we gonna have for scene three? Well, we have the beaming emperor saying, give them the best cloth, clear rooms for weaving, grant them anything. Okay, that's gonna be one paragraph. Then we have one weaver saying, thank you. That's another paragraph. Then we have the other weaver saying too kind. And then we have the emperor again. So we're gonna have four paragraphs in that scene. All right, now, if you think to yourself, I can't even do this and I'm an adult. I want to tell you that my junior high and high school students do this week in and week out. All of the things that I'm teaching and how I teach, I have successful students, 50 to 60 students every semester live. And now this year I have some uh, 
online situations, trying to get co-ops so that I can be the co-op teacher and then the moderator can take in their papers and all of that. I have online private students as well, but just even speaking from the experience for the last 20 years of testing all of my programs, 50 to 60, and when Joshua was teaching with this, we had 100 students because he taught in another location, doing these things week in and week out with great success. And the reason is because they are taught all the skills that are needed for that project. When I bring this twice told tale to my eighth graders, my seventh and eighth graders, seventh, eighth and ninth usually in the um, level B uh, classes, or in this case, level three in the um, right for a month books, they have already done so many skills that are in this project that it's, they've already done the simple twice told tales in fourth grade with no dialogue. They've already done the scene formations in fourth grade, fifth grade. They've already done the obstacles. They've already done the resolutions. They've already done the paragraph changes. They have even done onomatopoeia and um, uh, uh, personification and different kinds of literary techniques. And so moving into this is not a big deal. They know and they trust me to not just tell them, write a story. To not just tell them, write a story based off of the emperor's new clothes. They trust me to give them the skills, the support, the help that they need to complete the project well. And though that's the kind of teacher that we wanna be, all of us wanna be the kind of teacher that our students trust to give, us the, to give them the skills so that they can turn out a, a product that they're so excited about and happy about and happy with. All right, so then they're gonna outline using that model as their example. And they're gonna come here, they're gonna put their scene one and then their sentences. Um, I take another step here and I have my students draw a line whenever a new paragraph is going to be started um, in the outline with their highlighter. So what that means is they'll come along here in the sample, for example, they'll come along in scene three, they would have sentences one, two, and three, just like they are there. And then they'll draw a highlighter line, you know, like a blue highlighter or something underneath that. And then they'll do one weaver and draw a blue highlighter under that. Another weaver, draw a blue highlighter under that. Emperor, two sentences and another highlighter after under that. Okay. That just makes them, makes it easy for them to see at a glance how many people are speaking in that scene. Okay, and this is, I can't remember what uh, the overview box said, but they had to have X number of, C, of sentences um, of dialogue. So they will do that. All right, so they could have up to 20 um, um, scene paragraphs there. Uh, we have actually 50 in the book, but um, that was gonna, that'd be way too much paper for you guys to print. So um, most beginning writers will just have 20 scenes. Um, similar to the model, which had um, 15, looks like 15 scenes. There's how many the model had. Okay, so the reason I say 50 is um, I have some students who inevitably ask, can I do more than what is assigned, right? The story writers, the dreamers, the thinkers when it comes to creativity. All right, so the, we also have a simile and metaphor lesson um, in here again, whatever skill I expect them to do, they will have it taught to them. Um, and it's, that is, these are checklist challenge boxes. So I didn't put the checklist challenge in this because usually when a student is, uh, is has not done the checklist challenge that much, to bring that skill of the checklist challenge and at the same time as this advanced twice told tale skills, the advanced twice told tale skills is a little bit much. 
my kids have done the checklist challenge since second grade, so it's no big deal for them. All right, so that is how I teach Twice Told Tales. It is a wonderful, wonderful invention. It will take your students from non-writers to writers of stories, and uh, it will give them confidence. That is one of the greatest things, I think, about some of the directed writing, the writing boxes um, for second through sixth grade and the twice told tales for fourth through 12 at each, each grade level's level, right? Uh, you know, you don't bring a fourth grader and have them do this project, but um, the one great thing is the confidence that it instills. The directed writing approach will give students confidence to write. And um, I see it week after week and it is a joy to see. All right, so let me go to the back matter. You know that you can get your episode sheets. You can get them all at once in forward slash teacher's notebook, all in one PDF. So that will be 23 um, teacher's notebooks for you uh, with free lessons in them. You can get your this week's at forward slash how I teach. All right, there are some free products. These products, again, come with videos of me teaching uh, your students, not you. So it's really um, take a couple weeks off. There you go. All right, and then here are the twice told tales that, that are either out now or will be coming out. So if you have a junior high student that you are watching this uh, episode and you are looking at this saying, my eighth grader cannot do that, all you have to do is come back to a level two one. So let me see which ones are level two here. Fairy tales, that's go, uh, two, that's Goldilocks. Um, the twice told tales two, that's not listed there. Twice told tale uh, level two book has two different lessons in it. So you can go back to a level two and start your student when dialogue and the uh, that the lengthy number of sentences and paragraphs are not assigned. So just go back to a level two twice told tale. All righty, and we also have twice told tales in the semester long meaningful composition books. So uh, five two seven two and nine two are our creative writing books. They all have those, and then um, six one. I don't know why seven one's not there. Six one seven one eight one nine one, and then the um, jumpstart books also have them for remediation. So, alrighty, you can still create a class. It's not too late. It is. I'm recording this on August third, so it is. Um, it is time to start. We are going to start classes in two weeks, but um, you can create a class with me where I teach uh, locally or I teach online to your small group, to your family. Um, sometimes I've had like three siblings and my husband has two groups of this where he has three siblings who take all of their math together with him or he has three siblings and they take all of their SAT prep together with him or whatever. So I can create a class, I can teach your co-op, whatever it is that you want. We also have hire a teacher. So anyway, and private tutoring. So lots of teaching services, um, but keep watching how I teach um, for lessons in how to teach everything, grammar, writing, and um, grammar, writing, spelling, usage, all of those things that I love to teach so much. All righty. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next week on How I Teach.